happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good morning to all of you. Now, I'm going to give you an update on what's going on with Invest 91L and the path of it. Because we have potential for double vortices, maybe two surface lows that could form up out of all this thunderstorms. It is going across land. And what's going to happen after that is still a little up in the air. Plus, the biggest sunspot in years have been rotating around towards Earth. It wasn't facing Earth, but there is a glance and blow from these CMEs that did come off the other day. We have a geomagnetic storm for today. It will affect us tomorrow as well, but today is going to be the strongest day. So I'm going to give you the latest information on what's going on with Invest 91L and what could potentially happen after that. So far, no serious major impacts, but what comes after it is a lot of tropical moisture. It could add up to your rainfall at least from the 5 to 10 day. But there is a potential for double vortices to come out of this system. So, so far, 8 o'clock update this morning, it has raised back up to 40% chance in 5 days, 20% chance in 48 hours. And you can see the curve that is going on right towards Honduras and Nicaragua. But if you read the statement from National Hurricane Center, it has increased a little this morning, but not yet any signs of significant organization. The wave is forecast to move westward about 15 miles per hour, crossing the Windward Islands tonight and early Wednesday. Some slow development is possible while it continues westward and a tropical depression could form later this week or this weekend over the central or western Caribbean Sea. So they're not sure yet if it's going to be just what the euro is showing going towards Nicaragua, Honduras, or if there is going to be this second vortice that could take over and bring it towards the Yucatan, maybe Belize. But you can also see the latest intensity guidance that it remains maybe a tropical depression very weak until you get about three days away. Don't worry about this H wharf showing a cat four. That's taking a north pattern through Puerto Rico. That's pretty much the outlier. That is exactly the opposite of what is going on. There's too big of a high pressure over there just parked and then everything's gonna be going to the southwest. It can't go north. But in 72 hours, it could either be a tropical depression or maybe start strengthening to a tropical storm. And in five days, maybe be a strong tropical storm, maybe even a low-end Cat 1 hurricane still. And I am still showing that the Canadian was showing pretty much an outlier yesterday. There's no way it's going to be strengthening up something so strong so quick when it's going to be going over the land mass and then later on brewing up. When you look for a chance for a tropical depression, as far as with the Canadian, you can see how it stays strong and then it stays strong the whole time, going straight towards the Yucatan and Belize, start weakening down. And this is exactly the opposite of what National Hurricane Center is saying. They're saying it will get some gradual development, but not immediately. And when you look at the update with the Euro for a chance for a tropical depression, you see how it stays strong for a minute, but then it's gradually goes towards Nicaragua, Honduras, maybe getting up towards where a 70, maybe even up to 80% chance, maybe, of a tropical depression, according to the Euro. The land interaction is really messing this wave up. Now you can see this on National Hurricane Center. In 24 hours, tropical wave is gonna be right here and it's gonna be moving over to Windward Islands. In 48 hours, it is gonna stay a week somewhat tropical wave and in 72 hours it's all going to go over landfall and maybe get a surface low later on and when you follow a chance to get any kind of strong system according to the euro you can see how it stays weak as it goes over to windward islands and then it goes over south america and it just all that land interaction tears the system apart and once you get a little past four days then it starts strengthening up and goes towards nicaragua and honduras towards Central America, something weak. Now the update on the Canadian is showing about the same thing. It will stay something weak as it passes by the Windward Islands, gets to land interaction, but it's not so far south where it's too much land interaction. Intensification don't start immediately. Right when you get to four days, it does get a surface low and it starts strengthening up. And it shows it a lot stronger than what the Euro is showing. It's showing again all the way down to a 973 potential hurricane for Nicaragua, Honduras by the 9th. Now the GFS and the NASA satellite both sees double vortices. It shows after it goes over landfall, it will be all broke up and it won't have all its convection around its center. And it actually gets two vortices in the Caribbean. One goes like the Euro is saying towards Nicaragua, Honduras, 
but the other one picks up, heads west. And when you look at the update this morning on GFS to 6 Z, that's the one you can get the update on, it is confirming that it will be double vortices, but not so far apart. And it actually will do like the Canadian is showing, that it will go to the west towards Belize, towards a Yucatan, a 968 potentially strong hurricane. But when you go by the GOES satellite, the NASA satellite, you can see how you got the dust suppressing it on the backside of it, keeping it weak as it goes along, keeping it to the south. All the rain, all the thunderstorms is in South America and not in the Caribbean. As it gets off landfall, then it starts to try and strengthen up as it goes towards Nicaragua and Honduras. You can see how it's trying to curve up. But if you look at the same time, it does show a second wave popping up and going west into the Caribbean sometime around the 10th. But even though it sees double vortices with the NASA satellite, it's not showing a lot of strength. It's showing maybe something weak going towards Nicaragua and Honduras out of that first piece, and that second piece that carries to the west stays weak as well. It shows it'll go about the same location. But double vortices seen by both GFS and the GOES satellite. But you can also see according to the Euro, there's not a lot of wind gusts coming with that system so far and so far i believe the euro is correct might get a second wave off of it it's still days away so far only bringing 30 miles per hour wind gusts towards the windward islands and so far not a lot going on within the next five days and the rainfall isn't a lot neither it's one to two inches for the windward islands and it is getting some over venezuela as it passes over landfall and it's not bringing a lot of rainfall so far towards central america but in the next 10 days all the tropical moisture that's still coming through behind this wave is going to start adding up to potentially a lot of rainfall for y'all so i will keep y'all updated to see where this tropical moisture is going so far it could be heavier the next five days not the first five days the five days after that plus we just had one of the biggest sunspots in years is rotate around the northeastern limb and it is a big and dangerous sunspot and the reason why because the positive and negative magnetic polarities are bumping together and making an explosive mixture that could produce an x-class solar flare so NOAA forecasts says there is a chance for a g2 class geomagnetic storm today when multiple cmes might sideswipe earth's magnetic field and was hurled into space from the ar3112 huge sunspot that hasn't passed by in years guys now this will create auroras that will descend into the united states as low as new york and Idaho for the US. And here's a graph of the flares that it did have, and it did have an X1 flare. Now the rest of these flares are not that bad on impacts, but when you get an X1 flare, it is a bright, very powerful flare like this one here. And that's when you have your geomagnetic storm where you have potential problems. So I'll have all these links in the description for you so you can go get up to date with it, stay up to date with it for today. We do have strong chances to get our geomagnetic storm. Our KP, which I will show you, is from a 1 through a 9, is strongest for today and a little bit late night and early mornings for tomorrow. Then it starts weakening down. But for today, you see we have the G2 magnetic storm, and it is a level of a 6 for today. So remember, the KP is a six for today. It is going down towards a five later on, but I will show you what that means. That means location of who can see Aurora lights. Plus there will be radio blackouts caused from this for certain people as well. And you can see here, and I will show you what the latitudes are, but the power systems, high latitude power systems may experience voltage alarms, long duration storms may cause transformer damage. Plus, HF radio propagation can fade at higher latitudes, and aurora can be seen as low as New York and Idaho. So here's a look at your latitudes and who can see aurora lights for the U.S., and then I'll go over the radio blackout locations. So as you can see, you have your KP levels here. So we're at a KP 6 with this, then a 5. So in between this 7 and 5, in this location, is who can see aurora lights from this, then it'll slowly go a little bit further north where it'll just be all along this green line. But there is auroras that can be seen from this geomagnetic storm. 
But it is confirmed that during these solar flare events, the D region will experience brief to long lasting radio blackouts on the sunlit side of the earth. And this also does one minute updates on this page. Remember the links in the description. And this right here is your D region. So this is the most area that could be affected by possible radio blackouts, maybe even long lasting radio blackouts from what's going on with the sunspot across the sun. And the Northeast still has this coastal low that's gonna be hanging around for a couple of days. It is gonna bring you about 30, maybe low 40 miles per hour wind gusts along the edge of the Northeast, like maybe Southern New Jersey, but it's still bringing two or three inches of rainfall. These storms are gonna be around for a couple of days. Then it's gonna go away. Then we have this potential freezing temperatures and big snowstorm, maybe even blizzard conditions I've seen with some strong winds as well. I will update you on that tomorrow. But for today, I want to read to you 2 Corinthians verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound, to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. God bless you all today. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. Hope you have a very great, a very positive and motivated Tuesday out there. I appreciate every single one of you. And I will update y'all on what's going on with the temperatures and this potential snowstorm and maybe blizzard that is coming soon. All glory goes to God now and forever every day of my life may he also be every day in your life <laughs> amen <laughs> hallelujah even so Lord come